All right, here we go. Uh, this is Steve Hodgden from Modern Asset Management. And today is September 23rd, uh, 2020. I appreciate uh, the folks that are on the call. Um, what I'm going to do tonight is talk about what we're working on, one of the projects we're working on in Florida. And the intent is to uh, let people uh, chime in with ideas. <coughs> um, and we'll talk through the things that, uh, the options that, that we think are in front of us. Um, uh, some of you have listened to me before, know that I'm, uh, I'm a fan of uh, affordable housing, and that means that doesn't mean uh, uh, Section 8 or low end or any of that. That means affordable. Um, I've had uh, the last uh, several years, I've tried three higher end projects, and they've uh, all been trouble, um, primarily because of the time it takes to build a 6,000 square foot house or to engineer a pool on the side of a cliff um, or to uh, build a house that's uh, uh, bigger than the contractor's experience. Um, so I'm, uh, I've really become focused on bread and butter. Uh, our mortgage income uh, comes from uh, uh, entry level lower end houses, um, uh, several in Florida. Um, we've got uh, two rentals and two seller finance contracts in Florida uh, in Pensacola. We've done a total of eight projects there. And uh, I'm gonna go through um, what we're uh, playing with right now. And again, this is an intent to um, uh, elicit feedback, jump right in. Um, I'm gonna talk through what it is we bought um, and then some of the potential exits and then let uh, and hopefully we have an exchange. Um, I'm going to try to keep this uh, inside an hour. Um, as usual it's uh, it's about six o'clock here in California and I somehow forgot to eat lunch. So, so um, let me get rid of that. Um, so here we are. Um, I want to th again I want to thank the folks that have jumped on. I've got a chat. Uh, sent, uh, all right, and I've got photos uh, of a project that I talked about last month um, that was just starting construction, and um, they're coming from Pensacola, which is uh, where, we've done, where we've been doing work, and they're still, not still, they are recovering from a very wet hurricane, and uh, that, in fact, did damage uh, uh, fencing uh, with some down trees at one of our rentals and uh, I, have an, I have an insurance adjuster going out there on Saturday to uh, see if we come anywhere close to the deductible which I, I'm, I'm hoping we don't. I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that I you know we chop down some trees and we uh, fix uh, Martha's uh, Marsha's fence. We love Marsha. Um, <laughs> I have a pop-up from Eric, uh, from, uh, from Eric that uh, one of the things we're gonna show um, is already been shown. So um, that said, I, start, I called this, um, I just bought five acres and what am I gonna do with it? Um, so this is uh, the town of, um, somebody just confirmed that we can, uh, see the screen, just uh, I'm gonna assume until, until, until somebody puts a chat in otherwise. Um, so I'm backing up a little bit. Um, this is uh, Pensacola and we've done projects down here. We've done a handful of things in here. We've done some stuff inching up this way and there is, uh, there is, there is a um, idea of trying to be in the path of progress. And this part of the world is starting to see some action from some of the big builders. And we're gonna see if we can piggyback off of, uh, off of some of that. So this is uh, part of Pensacola, a little town called Cantonment. And it's kind of farmland kind of uh, low income, it's, uh, it's a neighborhood that uh, is on, on the rise. Um, and, and so here we're, uh, 
So what did we buy? We bought that, right? Um, not much to look at. And it looks like this all the way through to the other side. There's nothing there but a bunch of trees that have got to be removed. Uh, there's, uh, there's no, there's no city sewer. There's no, uh, there's no power there right now. There's no, there's no water. It's just undeveloped land. Uh, it's been owned for a long time, uh, by another family. And they were at a point that they were interested in a cash offer. Uh, we paid, uh, $52,500. And so that's a little more than $10,000 an acre. And, uh, it's um, uh, zoned LDR, uh, low density residential, and which means in that part of the world, it is, oh, I have another, uh, let's see, uh, that part of the world, that a little bigger, uh, means it can be quarter acre lots. So there's, uh, so that's, uh, Four times five would be 20, um, but that's not really true because you have to have setbacks. You have to put in a road, which will go right between these trees. And I'm gonna show you uh, why we think this has got some legs. Um, first thought is to uh, quick flip it. Um, let me go down here, I'm gonna go down the street here and take a look at the neighbor. So this is what the this is what the area pretty much is. It's uh, multiple acre parcels, single family houses. There's some barns. There's a little this and that. Um, go down here a little more. We got more cleared land. Nothing happening, right? Um, so we'll go back up the street, and here we are. We're back at. Uh, but we're saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with this? There's a power line somewhere around here. Uh, it's up the street here a little bit. There it is. So we've got to get from here, from 2000 Elma, down the street to uh, down the street. And what uh, what makes this enticing is uh, Florida is really easy to work with in terms of. Uh, um, city management, or in this case, it's county county management to get things done. Uh, they are very much interested in provide in growing their population, in providing housing that's uh, reasonable. Uh, Dr. Horton, like I said, we'll look at that in a minute. Dr. Horton is building uh, three developments not too far from here. Um, that the house prices are nearing a quarter of a million dollars, two twenty, two twenty, two forty. So we keep going down the street. Hang on, get rid of this. Sorry. Turn the volume down. Um, oh, I went too far. I'm gonna go back to the. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the address. There is a um, little development. Go back to the map and find it that way. So here we are in Elna. There's this little development right here. Called Cottage Park Road. A little bit bigger. See, this would be what we would do. We have uh, 16 lots built with a street and a cul-de-sac at the end. Um, these houses we'll go take a look at um, if we need to, but uh, from space, this is what it looks like. And this I think is what we look like. I think we're a little further down. I think we're, nope, we're here. That is us. So we're this bunch of trees. And you have some single family, larger lots. You come up here, you have a neighborhood. And this is uh, certainly on the county's uh, list of things that they would like to see. They'd like to see another one of these. So our uh, uh, one of the exits is to sell right away. Another exit is to entitle uh, to be able to have this done, which doesn't take a whole bunch of time. 
uh, it takes a uh, county board hearing to be approved. Um, so call it a month, maybe a little more depending on timing. We'll probably hear these one, one week a month. Um, and then sell all of it as one. Next would be to sell it in individual lots. The next would be to keep some lots to build on, sell some lots as we go. Um, or you could go all the way to um, a build to rent community where you build single family rental houses uh, or some combination of, uh, of, uh, of uh, buyer of owners and renters and you build a uh, you build a cash stream cash flow stream that way um, we're uh, it was, like I said it was fifty two thousand dollars and we're taking a taking a little flyer here to see what see what happens um, so I'm actually taking you to Zillow because that shows you right where it is. Um, it's just a little patch of dirt. Um, and I'm going to show you a county record. That, oh, this was the question we had is, what's the water franchise? It's a separate, uh, uh, a separate company. It's not the Escambia County uh, Utility District. Uh, so there's some some interesting water uh, group up there. Um, so um, like I said there's the parcel map. And we can bounce from here. If we wanted to go look at the appraiser record. Um, zoned uh, vacant residential, out of state owners been bouncing around in that uh, in that group uh, for uh, for a while uh, probably somebody inherited it way back here in 1971 somebody paid four thousand dollars for it uh, so they turned four into fifty two thousand so there's so they're okay all right like I said our first effort is to try to turn four into and turn our 52 into a net maybe 82 or more um, so uh, they appraised it at forty five thousand dollars in the uh, in the last uh, last appraisal last tax basis, so um, I'm gonna go back here. And we can um, we can open the floor a little bit while I go download some of these pictures to talk about the project that's uh, that's happening right now. To show you an example of what we what we could do pretty simply on that uh, on that property. Um, so, so if somebody wants to end this call early and make us an offer to buy this property, uh, <laughs> we can do that. Um, but while we're at it, um, I'm going to open up some pictures. And this, this is, I really should have done this, uh, done this earlier. I apologize. Um, let's see. So does somebody jump in and make a comment on what you think you do with this while I download pictures of the Americas uh, project I talked about last month, which is now, uh, um, been moving along despite uh, having a uh, significant uh, storm. So. Steve, if you were to hold on to that and start developing it, what um does your tax liability go up uh, significantly? Do they reassess it every year as you start developing? And, and uh, is there a significant increase in taxes or potential? So Escambia reassesses ongoing uh, pretty much every, every two years. Um, taxes, uh, real estate taxes in Florida on improvements is pretty significant. Um, it'll come out assessed at the 52.5 that we uh, bought it at. And then it will um, it'll be two years before um, it 
comes up again. Maybe they might accelerate it once the uh, map is done. And we would we would we would argue that you know the map doesn't change the value of the property, even though of course it does. But it only changes the value only changes the value when it's uh, when it's a transaction. Um, so I think we're I I don't I don't think we have a significant consequence um, taxes or that amount. Mm. 900 a year maybe something like that thank you um but uh the the holding cost would be you know if it was financed the holding cost would certainly be something that would be important um and because we paid we paid cash which got us the discount that we that we're, we're hoping to uh lever the um the real the real culprit here is always going to be time um so we've been um uh, we funded, I'm gonna jump over to the other project that to give you an example of what could be put up there relatively quickly. Um, and oh, and John wants to know why, uh, why, 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 uh, why this parcel? Um, because it was right, right price, right time in a market that is uh, showing real activity. Uh, there is these, uh, there are, like I said, there's three D.R. Horton developments that are all well along and, uh, and selling, selling well. Um, it is a, uh, there's a, we've got this huge uh, exodus of people out of uh, the Northeast that's been ongoing for decades that's really accelerated now. And a retired uh, couple would well well and we've been selling houses to uh, semi or retired couples uh, for the quarter million dollar price point um, and we may build some that are at even a lower price point may build some smaller some smaller units um, geared toward uh, people without uh, without families um, I have to go open and we'll show you the an example of what could go up what could go up in that property pretty darn quick um, so um, a couple of episodes ago, maybe, or maybe the last episode, um, I talked about a project that we called Americas, because it's on Americas, not a street. And it was a four unit, um, uh, little tiny mobile home uh, complex, I don't know, complex, that wasn't a complex, it was just uh, uh, just four, four 1960s mobile homes sitting on, uh, sitting on, I don't know, three quarters of an acre. And, um, and Sunrise Acquisition Services bought it uh, with the intent of redeveloping it. And um, I'm gonna switch and show you what the project, uh, what, one of the, what, one, what the end result is. Um, so. This would have really been better if I uh, made, made a better presentation. Um, so um, you see this house? This is, uh, this is a brick wrapped uh, brick wrapped house. There used to be a mobile home sitting here. Um, it's 1,200 square feet approximately. Um, it's uh, it took two months to get to this uh, get to this point. I think maybe even a little less. Because we're building, um, because we're building uh, um, for the same. So, oh, anyway, so let me back up and just quick cover what this deal was. Um, I've done eight projects with Sunrise Acquisition Services. Um, they have all uh, finished in the money. Um, one did not finish on time and was a disappointment um, because of the choice of the contractor. And with Sunrise. Uh, did in that uh, deal to uh, make it make make sure that we were whole is they didn't take their um, their their share as per what what our agreement was um, so we didn't hit our target return on investment because the project took nine months longer than planned because the contractor wandered away to go build another house um, 
And so Sunrise stayed on the job or came back on the job, pushed it to completion and didn't get, did not get paid. So when this project came up, uh, decided that the, uh, the right thing to do was to rather than do a joint venture, uh, what I did here is I did a straight loan from my um, self-directed IRA um, or my uh, part of it came from the IRA, part of it came from, uh, from an HSA. <laughs> That's at Quest, and we wrote uh, we wrote a note at um, at um, eight percent interest plus two points uh, with a uh, with a ten month I believe uh, uh, expiration. So um, this house is um, up and open, and if we if you remember uh, a week ago, uh, Pensacola was in the news because of thirty inches of rain and you know all kinds of damage. Uh, this is pretty darn dry. Um, depends on what part of town you're in. It's another reason why I like cantonment. It's uh, inland, uh, another 20 miles. Um, so it's uh, not on the coast where things get knocked down and washed away. Um, so this, is, this isn't this is a bad little house. Um, it's going to sell for $180,000. Um, you put a garage, you put a garage over here on the side and the price is suddenly $210. And so that's the uh, that's our thinking for this property if we were to develop it or for the next project we go to is move up just a little bit. Um, so I had another picture of one that is uh, one of the construction one of the one of the things this stuff uh, whoops over here. Um, this is uh, before the wrap is put on it. Um, one of the things that I'm really enamored with and the folks at Sunrise um, um, are, are experimenting with is uh, structural integrated uh, uh, pa engineer and in integrated or engineered panels, SIPs panels, um, where just like trusses are built off site, roof trusses are built off site and delivered, um, the walls are built off site and delivered to be uh, put together. Um, they're all CAD designed, they fit together, the workmanship is really good. Um, a big win is the lack of, uh, you don't have any uh, waste, uh, lumber waste on site. Um, it was an estimate I saw that uh, up to 30% of, of the lumber for a project can be wasted and, and thrown away. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a better, it's a better, it's a better win-win for everybody. For the environment, uh, it uh, keeps your costs in line and the speed is really what I'm after. If we're, if if the primary, the primary uh, uh, problems I've had with projects has been completion on time. And when projects complete on time, everybody's happy, uh, buyer, seller, uh, contractor, uh, developer, uh, everybody, everybody's happy. We're, once, uh, we're only meant to be together so long before we uh, uh, lose our temper with each other. Um, so, so I've got a Another couple of pictures um, I can maybe show. Uh, so it's, uh, I got a private note that yes, it's 1200 square feet and it was two and a half months uh, from permit to where it is right now. So 10, 10 weeks to build a house. Um, any of you in California, um, 18 months to get a permit, <laughs> you know. Uh, so um, when people ask, you know, I, I, I've been chastised for not owning property where I can drive and see it, um, and I just can't make I just can't make the multiples work anywhere any anywhere like uh, Florida, uh, close to home. So, you know, so there's there's all kinds of things you can do with exit. Uh, you know, if we if we hung on to something and we're building entry level housing. Uh, we can do some seller finance paper. We can uh, we can do some land lease uh, uh, things. There's uh, I could put together a small fund. Um, um, we could uh, make sure I I don't think this property is, but there is a significant part of that part of uh, Escambia County that's opportunity zone. So if we were going to do a long term hold. And looking to avoid capital gains, you know, we could still go make a we could still go make a play for that, and we could maybe even petition if we decided to hold this to have it added to an opportunity zone. So, yeah.
So what do we got? Any questions? You want to tell me this is a stupid idea? You want to tell me what they do with uh, five acres of nothing uh, in uh, northwestern uh, uh, Florida? Um, as we, <laughs> oh, hi, Bettina. Hi, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good, good, thank you. I have a question. This is, uh, sounds like a great opportunity because, um, you know, you just mentioned, and I came late, I'm sorry, I came late, so I may not have all the background details, but uh, I walked in when you said that DR Horton is, you know, it's in the so-called path of progress where they're building and and they're selling at a at a pretty nice clip, correct? Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, while you're talking, I'll go look for uh, I'll go look for one of their listings. And and I'm thinking, what needs to be done to the land to prepare it for sale to a developer? Does that make sense? <laughs> Um, to sell to a developer, we will add value by getting it entitled into quarter acre parcels. So it's so got the, all the, and I'm just learning a little bit about land. It's a, an entirely new language. I mean, it's not even another dialect. I mean, it's really a, another language that I, that I guess the sewer and uh, utility lines and all these other things, I mean, are those there or is it something part of what you would have to do to prepare it for a developer? So we wouldn't, we, there's, you can exit at various stages. The uh -huh. um, okay. fir the first is sell it just as is, you know, don't do, don't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, the next is to, um, do what we're do what we've started which is to draw a plat map um get the uh, get the get the planning department to agree in uh theory in principle that yes we would approve we would approve 16 quarter acre lots per the building code on this as long as there is a road and water and electric um, this is out in the country a little bit, so there would have to be a plan including septic uh, systems. This is not uncommon in Florida at all. Um, mm -hmm. two, two of my three rentals are septic. Um, we had a problem, not a problem, we had uh, some repairs that had to be done on one at the beginning when we bought the property. Um, electric is, uh, is, is down the block. Um, and uh, water is water is adja adjacent, so there'll be there'd be some fees to bring those things in, and so that's the next step. So the next steps are draw a map, put it on the market as as a full as a full um, full uh, permitted um, sixteen unit development. Uh, the next after that is to get the appropriate uh, permits to bring water and electric to the property and permit to install a road and that's and then you start chipping off what those things cost i mean twenty thousand dollars for a 200 square to a 200 foot road and three thousand dollars per oh, yeah. water hookup and okay. you know and so you just start adding those on um and that of course would go into the price of the lot um so if we if we were to exit at ten thousand dollars a lot that would be $160,000. Um, we, we spent 50, so now we have 110,000. And can I get all those things done inside of that 110? And we, and the pencils that we can, and we can. Um, yeah. So DR, so DR Horton is a, um, is a big builder nationwide, but particularly yeah. on the East Coast. And, um, and they have, I was gonna get a look at, um, the nearby uh, closest one. The closest one is Greystone, and they're building they're building eighteen hundred square foot uh, opening uh, bids. We are we are. This is here. We're between these two uh, developments. We're 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 right about there. 
right? So mm -hmm. Ransom, Ransom Middle School is where is, is the school district there. Uh -huh. um, so I've got D.R. Horton there. I've got D.R. Horton all over, all over Florida. Um, so they're, they've been doing a lot and they've been building, they've been building a, you know, a, a corset, you know, a very nice product. And if you want a, um, let's find, Yeah, so they're all the same kind of floor plan, 1,800 to 3,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Of course, they show you the big ones. Did my screen change? Bettina, did my screen change? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And and this is this is lovely stuff. Yeah. Very okay. nice. You could right. you could make a decision to be a straight up competitor or just a hair under this as a competitor, and build some uh, build build twenty five hundred square foot houses. Um, that'd be okay. You could cut it into larger parcels to do that if you wanted. Um, and that's again that would be you know if the first if the first exit is um, make a fifty thousand dollar wager that you can sell it for eighty or ninety thousand dollars short term. Mm -hmm. And that's that's step one. Mm -hmm. And then if if then if that if that isn't uh, if that doesn't work and it then it you know may or may not, then with the plans in place, the property is worth more of more value. And simply you know maybe Dr. Horton buys it or another another of the many builders that are there. Right. Um, or like I said, one of the end one of the exits is to not exit. Um, is to build 16, 16 uh, uh, affordable, you know, I don't know $1,500 a month uh, rental houses um, or seller finance or, you know, whatever, whatever, and, and work the whole project out the whole, that, that whole way. Um, how, how far are you in taking those three scenarios and pricing them all out in terms of some financial model to see what, which one would make the most sense for you? the it's the subject the subject that is you know is, is time is the variable yes and and i think the light i think a light a likely scenario if it doesn't sell once it's been platted mm -hmm. is to um is to start um road construction start power um and maybe build three units and then okay. have it taken out by other by other builders uh-huh um, that may that may be the project because if we were gonna if we were gonna take this on we'd be at it you know a couple of years yeah oh and, yeah and but again with you know with such a low basis in the land that might be okay also mm -hmm. you know so it's uh, um, we we think we got it at an aggressive enough price that we'll be able to we'll be able to sell it quickly but then you know you know me um, the minute I sell something I want to buy something else. <laughs> and and you know and, we're, and frankly we're already looking um you know i i always have i always have more opportunities than i have cash uh so i have to i have to cherry i have to you know kind of cherry pick and realize i can't do everything um but uh, i've got a um i i have a verbal agreement on a Twenty eight hundred square foot uh, Gulf Breeze uh, renovate uh, quick flip renovation. Um, and I'm supposed to close on um, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, in October. It's almost October. Um, but uh, but um, so it's so this piece of pro these houses that we're looking at from Dr. Horton uh, started out with land just like this. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just land just like this and. Somebody got busy. Um, we know we have. We were building way back in the video series. Um, you'll see a picture of me standing in front of a house that's being built. Um, that was a place called Inner Rarity Island, and I funded five projects there. And it was the same same kind of thing: building a house like this, building a eighteen hundred square foot house, selling it for. Um, uh, Two hundred and forty thousand dollars, mm -hmm. and we did everything from fund the construction, split the deal with the builder, uh, just finance the lots, uh, finance the lots, and the uh, um, the cash flow, um, the spread that the uh, uh, builder needed with the primary lender. Uh, we 
we've worked out a nice relationship with a company, uh, one of the lenders in the space called Builder Finance. And, uh, you know, we've made, we've always made our interest payments, so they like us. Um, and so we have, we've learned the, we've learned the components. Uh, Sunrise has uh, built a good crew. Um, right now they are, um, they're as busy as can be because they just had this uh, uh, hurricane and one of their, one of their niches is roofing. So they've, oh. been, they've been, they're, they're out, their guys are out doing roofs uh, right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, this may sit for a couple of months on market with a plat map. Uh, that says it's here's looks just like the one down the street, which is which is why we're confident that there would be no pushback from the county. Uh, right. The county needs housing. There's a development built 30 years ago that looks exactly like it. Um, and I should probably uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to Zillow and um, maybe show you that because. Those are. Uh, this is part of the part of the part of the thing you got we got to figure out. Whoops. Um, part of the thing we got to figure out is exactly that. You know, the, you know, what's the what's the bad news? How am I going to get hurt? You know, how how is this how is this going to go bad? Mm -hmm. um, so. So what are those possibilities? I mean, uh, in a s type of scenario like this. Um, first is first is we overpaid. There is no appetite, um, but we know that a similar parcel sold down the street for ninety thousand dollars last year. Mm -hmm. you know, so this is not a this isn't like putting a house for sale in suburban San Francisco that's going to get snatched before this before the signs nailed in the ground. Um, this is, this, this is, there has to be the builder. You've got to know the community. You've got to be out there talking to people saying, Hey, I've got this thing, you know, do you want it? And what would you do? Right. Um, so what was I looking for? I was looking for, um, oh, I have to look at my address again. Um, So you see the Zillow screen? Yes. Okay. This is this is that street that I that I showed that I showed toward the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is what was built um, in I think nineteen eighty nine or ninety five something like that. So these are call them thirty call them thirty years old. <laughs> and sale price is somewhere roughly um, in the hundred. This is this is wrong. Um, is north of $130 a foot. Um, the Zillow ranking is a bit off whack. There were a couple of foreclosures that were here, so it's mm -hmm. pushed these down. Mm -hmm. um, but this is this is isn't far off from what we'd be building. We'd be building new construction, um, 1,200, 14, 1,500 square feet. I, if I was going to build there, I'd go a little. I'd go bigger. Um, adding another bedroom is. Uh, least expensive way to uh, uh, um, increase your uh, sale price. Um, the cost of adding a bedroom is much cheaper than adding a second bathroom or, or, or a second story. And there's plenty of room to um, you know, add it. But it would be, we would build exactly this. And this, this is part of the, of the sales pitch that interested us. And, but also, you know, is, look, this is easy to copy. And, you know, and we know we know pricing, you know, if, uh, there's been the same increase in, uh, in house prices there as there's been here with the decrease in, um, uh, in interest rates. So affordability is, you know, you can buy more house. Um, but what really makes this work is that there, there is all, there is a shortage of $200,000 houses in that part of the world. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the biggest, the biggest factor is, the biggest biggest risk is time. Second biggest biggest risk is your partner. Mm -hmm. um, so and and third biggest risk is you made a mistake. I think um, you know, I'm going to do 
I'm going to do the next webinar on the last note that I bought uh, uh, from through a uh, from a uh, from a big service uh, where um, <laughs> I have so many seminars I've learned in that last process. Um, I just uh, uh, was awarded four properties at a sheriff's sale this morning, um, and I'm chasing chasing debtors to uh, pay a balance. Pay a balance, but um, I know Pensacola people on the ground I've known for years. We've had eight successful projects. We had one go sideways and they made it right. And that's, you know, that's, 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 what do I, what, what more do I need to know? Um, they have just weathered an apocalyptic uh, storm. And uh, for some reason, people are okay with that. <laughs> you know, we're, we're okay with it. Um, so, but uh, so this is so this is similar types of con, you know similar type of construction. Um, it's you know it's okay. You know this is this is good this is good habitat. This is good this is good housing. It's you know and uh, and we can we can again copy and we can be as as much like the high end builder. Um, or we can build. If, I'm gonna, if I was going to build rentals, I'm. You know, I'm. It's. They're not getting hardwood floors. They're not getting twelve foot ceilings. You know. They'll. But. Um, but putting up. Uh, what did we learn? We learned that putting up ten foot ceilings uh, instead of nine uh, helps sell a house. Um, one of the inerarities that we did. I think we did. Oh no, the um, sawgrass property. Uh, the one that was on the water. Uh, and you'll find a video for that. Just an amazing view, right straight out to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, they put 11 foot ceilings in that house, and it was it was dramatic. Um, and so that that wasn't uh, that's that extra foot is just a little more wood, um, a little bit more wood. Or if you're doing structural panels, maybe a little bit more structural steel. Um, I'm uh, again, I'm you no. Know, I'm the California guy, so I'm, uh, uh, what am I? I'm uh, becoming more and more uh, ecologically uh, uh, interested in, in things. Um, oh, I just got the, uh, let me show you, let me show you this. So, Oops, back to Zoom. Um, you would think after two years of doing these things, I'd be better at this. <laughs> I'd have a presentation. Um, so the, the things here, the, here's the trusses being uh, being loaded. Um, that was, you know, I don't know, uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, I think. Um, the, you see them laying on the ground, labeled here, 4830. Um, this is the way the wall panels come. They come the same way. They come numbered. Um, you plug them together. You know, one, two, three, four, five. They can have the rate channel raceways built in for electric and and uh, water. Um, but they come out, and the crane puts them into place. And this was remarkable. Uh, the next day, uh, when I came back to the property, there was a full roof, and they were already starting to put sheeting on it. Um, in in a day. In two days, this house went from just poured, just cured concrete to being completely encased. Um, it was just, there was a, a, a beehive of workers on this for uh, you know, a good 10 hours a day. Um, but uh, the other interesting thing about this picture is this is uh, before the, co the uh, uh, quarantine 15 that I've put on. Uh, so, uh, so thanks for sending this picture over. It reminds me to put the ice cream spoon down. Um, and so, um, uh, Joseph uh, wanted to know: Do we hire architects to design our projects? Um, oh, he <laughs> sent another photo with the septic system problem. I may go look at that. Um, so I, I'm going to go look at that. Sorry, thanks. Um, do we hire architects? There's um, yes, you need a local architect to make sure that your plans are um, are fit with the with the individual county codes. 
but you don't start from scratch. Um, there's a, a remarkable uh, encyclopedia of home plans that are available. Uh, so in a, in a SIPS construction house, as you take your architect, you take your plans through the architect locally, make sure they're up to code. Uh, you take them down, you get them approved. They go to the SIPS factory uh, someplace in Georgia, not near Atlanta, but someplace in Georgia. Um, and uh, two months later, um, your, your house in a box is delivered to you. Um, and it's you know, not quite that easy, uh, but that's pretty much what the path is. Um, the, uh, we've been building the, Five that we built on Inerarity Island were variations of the same floor plan that the builder had done I don't know, half a dozen or ten times before. Um, so it was uh, it was it was a known uh, project, and that helps a lot. Um, the little house that uh, that you saw the picture of earlier little house that was uh, 12, a 1200 square foot square, um, you'd uh, amend that if you wanted to make that fit to, um, if you wanted to step up from just use that, you could extend the roof line, you could, uh, you could uh, just bump out one side of the walls and go to more to a rectangle than, uh, than a square. Um, <coughs> You know all manner of all manner of stuff. Um, it's the architect is nowhere near as expensive or take as long as it used to be. Um, you know, like I said you can. There's people here in California selling um, uh, full, complete, delivered to build um, accessory dwelling units. The in-law uh, house, the little in-law units you put in your backyard, um, and they're selling those just plug and play. Uh, they'll do all the paperwork, chase everything down, get you approved, all that, and uh, and, and deliver. Uh, so that that um, uh, off-site construction using modern uh, uh, building methods um, and the uniformity you get by constructing the same project over and over um, is uh, is is where you drive down your costs if it cost you $120 a foot for house number one, you've learned enough by house number three that house number four is $105 a foot. And you know, you know, maybe, you know, maybe there's a 10% or more savings. Um, we saw that, we saw that in the, uh, uh, what were they, they were called, the, the model that building in a, in a rarity was called Guzma. Um, like this is called Americus because there's houses on the houses are around Americas. The first houses of those, they built three houses on a street called Guzman. So they were the Guzman model. Um, and then, you know, they were just, what did they do? They did, uh, they would turn the floor plan around. One would be left-handed, the next one would be right-handed. Uh, but they were, they were the same. So anybody want to buy some land? Anybody want to build some houses? You don't want to build houses? You want to build something else? You want to buy? You want? You want to? You want to finance the build? Um, you know all that all that stuff. You know, so, um, and I you know, and I say that I say that kiddingly, um, but the uh, but the fact the fact of the matter is is that you know I can I can only move I can only move. Uh, so many projects ahead and scale of projects ahead um, with our own capital. Um, we're still busy. We're still busy funding uh, funding loans on the other on the other side uh, all the time. Um, how do you? Mm -hmm. I have a question. How do you structure? Uh, say you want to um, bring in um, outside money to help with developing this land. <laughs> or you decide? Yeah. How would you structure that? I mean, in terms of um, a construction loan, you've got private lenders, you've got, you know, other, so, I mean, how does, how do you go about 
putting together all of the moving parts. Right. For and, it, and, it's, and it's something that, that will change and evolve. Um, you know, again, I'm not, I, I, I gotta back up. I am, this is, you know, I'm not doing this to solicit people to write me checks. I am not doing that. What I'm doing no, this I, for. I, I really, I'm, for, I'm curious to know how, because I'm in a similar situation with uh, an opportunity in, in Austin, Texas, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, how do you kind of pull things together? Who does what? And how do you align all the stars, <laughs> so to speak, uh, that makes sense? Um, and who, who do you go to for, for what role mm -hmm. in, the, in the cycle? You see, so I'm just curious how you would put well, so, the deal together. So it, like it's um, cost of capital is an enormous uh, is an enormous piece of this, right? Um, so the the developer, the sponsor of something, yeah, um, always wants people to be in a uh, in an equity position. So you're you're creating a capital stack, right? Um, of first is the uh, the uh, syndicate, this in this case, call it a syndicator. And the syndicator puts in their, you know, ten percent. Mm -hmm. uh, then next, there is a group of equity investors that are in for either a fixed amount, um, a fixed amount plus a uh, plus a bonus uh, on an upside, um, or they're in it for a long term hold. So you have to know what you're you have to know what you're really trying to do. Oh. So. If you were to say simply, we were going to build 16 units, hold them forever as rentals, you would call your cost of each one $150,000. So you've got 16 units at $150,000. You have an, an investor group that put up a third of the building costs, so 60 times 50, put up $800,000. And then you have a builder who, uh, I'm sorry, builder finance, for example, or, or Flagstar, or, uh, that would then loan in the million two to comp complete the project. So it's a $2 million total project. And if you're gonna hold, then you have, an, you have a, either some sort of LLC or a membership agreement or some sort of special purpose vehicle or a tenants in common agreement. Um, and then you refi and pay people back some capital and manage the project to make distributions and all that. I see. I see. <laughs> so what we've typically, what I've been, um, um, oh, um, I've got some, I've got some photos coming with uh, what the SIPs panels look like, which is interesting to me. So you'll have to put up with that. Um, so you have the risk is in the, the, the risk in the equity partners is in a project that's too big for the syndicator's uh, ability to weather uh, a bad storm, uh, mm -hmm. a bad and by bad economic storm. Um, in 2000, you guys, are, some of you have heard this, some of you have not. So here it is again. To December 2006, I bought a uh, shopping, a small shopping center, a 45,000 square foot shopping center in Denver. That was December of 2006. March of 2007, the world came to an end, right? The real estate world collapsed. By March 2008, my $4.2 million purchase that I had invested an additional $600,000 in capital to improve the property. So now I'm into this thing for $4.8 million was worth 2.5. It was 80% dark 45,000 square feet 80 percent dark one building there was a subway at one corner and a dog room at the other and nothing in between there were like six empty store storefronts mm -hmm. took me eight years weathering that feeding it all right and so feeding it every year eighty thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars feeding this thing finally the world turned the property Next door was developed into a grocery store, as we had as we had hoped eight years before, and I exited that property at five and a half million dollars. So it took me all that time. I could handle 
that. It took everything I had, but I could handle that and, and weather it through. Mm -hmm. If I had had capital partners, well, then I might have been in trouble, right? Because people have different, people have different needs. Right. If it was a $20 million project, it would have sunk me. You know? mm -hmm. So I can buy a small piece of land and I can build five, I have the capacity to build three houses, five houses at a time. I do not have the capacity to build a 200 unit, uh, uh, 200, 200 home, 40 acre development. Now that's, mm -hmm. that's for the, that's for the Wall Street people. Mm -hmm. right? So, um, so that's one of the things is you've got to match. And, and Bettina, you know this when you've got somebody who is doing a lot of deals and right. doesn't have the equity to back them up and doesn't have, and doesn't put their partner first. Right. Right. And you've been you've been on the wrong side of that. So so that's why I keep coming back to the you know, it's time is the biggest enemy. Mm -hmm. And as says the guy who took a year and a half to foreclose on a piece of property. Uh, <laughs> so, well, and, and, and yeah. And, and the other is partner risk and partner capacity. Yeah. So, you know, so you have to you have to know that, you know, how far out in the limb you're going. Um, the, you go back and look at the video for the Linda Flora mansion that, um, that I had to foreclose on to get paid. Oh, that was um, the Bel Air property. Yeah, the right? Bel Air project. Yeah. That, that builder had nothing. He had nothing. Um, so there was nothing for me to go after except the property. And, and, and that, that, you know, that turned out okay. Only because I've been a bill collector for 30 years and I've been suing people since the, well, since 1990, uh, you know, and I, I know how to do that part of it, you know, mm -hmm. you know, so, so those are the things. So it's, it's, you know, looking, making sure that the partner, the partners aligned with you, that it's not, you know, what would I worry about? I'd worry about any kind of fees above 10%. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd look to make sure that, um, that here's, here's a, not guaranteed, but here's a preferred return of six or seven percent. Mm -hmm. And then there's so there's a tier. So if we make a 20 percent profit, we get we get you get you get six, the syndicator gets six. And now there's now there's eight left over. And maybe that eight is split 70, 30, 70 to the money investors, 30 to the uh, to the builder. Mm -hmm. or or if the profit is 30 percent then the build then the syndicator gets a special bonus for getting it there and the same split you know maybe the split becomes maybe the split at a 30 percent margin becomes 50 50. Mm -hmm. right so so i look for returns and that now i look for returns and now i look for returns that are achievable and realistic in the teams that have a downside risk that I can handle mm -hmm. right and and this is I'm I'm not buying sight unseen notes anymore because I had three go bad that chewed up the profit from another 10 mm -hmm. right? yeah. and so you know so I would much rather build a house that's only only going to make 12 percent a year um, that I know for the next 20 years is going to is going to be standing and isn't going to fall down and it's not a 1920s knob and tube wiring you know etc cetera, etc cetera. it's you know it's something that it's you know and this is like you know i i like i still like playing in the low end game you know buy a house for 20 put 20 in it so i'm into it for 40 sell it on a note for 60 that's great that's great um you know that's uh, that's you know that's juicy and that's fun um, but you know, I'm 64 and my horizon is realistically, you know, a max 20 years, you know, I used to smoke and all that. Um, so, you know, I got to look at how do I make a reasonable return and make sure that I, when I, if I magically lived at 85, that I hadn't, didn't run out of money when I was 84. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, so I, I like the idea of if I if I bought four things, I sell three for a profit and keep the fourth one, you know, something like that. 
Yeah. And that's what I and that's what I did with uh, with notes. I, well, I didn't sell three. I sold uh, I sold a third of my notes, and that reduced my cash into the that I owed into the other ones um, that I had into the other ones, and my returns were you know right you know they're right around you know ten twelve percent. So that was a really, really long way to say it's the partner and is it reasonable? Mm -hmm. You know, that six million dollar house was amazing. It was fantastic. <laughs> I'm never doing it again. <laughs> yeah. I stood on the rooftop deck of that house and I felt like I was on Mars. That is not where a kid from New Jersey belongs. <laughs> right? You know. I understand. I understand the house that that uh, that Sunrise Acquisition Service is building, because that's what I grew up in. I grew up in a 1,200 square foot block with a three bed, one bath. You know, you knew where the you, there were a thousand houses this, the same in this development in New Jersey. You knew where the bathroom was in every single one. You know, you know there was no diff There was no difference from from any of them, and and that was just fine. Yeah, that was just fine. Um, oh, oh my goodness, I've got a ton of stuff to show you. Hang on. Um, let's see. This is this is where if I had done this earlier, if I had gotten pictures earlier and I had time, um, I would have put a PowerPoint together on this. So um, I'm just going to show you. Uh, I'm going to do a little. Um, uh, real estate pitch for Pensacola. Um, people here in California, including including the woman that I live with, Mrs. Hodgson, says, why in the world would you go to Pensacola if you could live in Marin County? And I said, well, it's because you can't live in Marin County. You live in Pensacola. <laughs> you know, who, who in the world can afford that, right? Um, right here, let me open the, let me, let me open this one. Um, <laughs> so, oh, and the person sending me the photo says, "Yes, I'm a, I'm a slacker." Um, yes, and it's well, I know you're not because I was. We should have we should have done this like four hours ago. Um, but uh, here, this is why people live in Pensacola. Right? That's uh, that's Perdido Key or Perdido Bay. I forget which. Um, and that's a, a couple of jet skis and a boat there and here's your boat launch and there's the dog swimming in the water and there you are standing and that's what you get to look at every night. Um, so, so that's, uh, let's see. Oh, I already showed you that one. Uh, this one. This um, stop share. Uh, this is the six construction. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's it's not Legos. It's not um, it's not a mobile home. These are you know, these are two by six trusses. These are two by fours. This is this is. This is, I believe, better construction than building on site because the measurements are accurate coming out of the factory and you don't have a, well, you don't have, don't, you're not dependent on the carpenter's mood that day for how well he's gonna put the, uh, put the walls together. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it takes, it's, I'm always after um, uh, repeatable, scalable, um, and, and again, I keep, I keep saying my, biggest um, uh, battle is time um, so is this called prefab um, it's they they they're trying to find other words for it because prefab has a bad kind of feel I see okay. <laughs> so I've been inside of some of these and I really this one is made out of wood I really like the ones that are metal frame they're just so cool um, so you take you take metal frame or wood frame and then you, so you've got this outside um, uh, recycled lumber press board kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, which is heavy and strong and really dense. Um, if you've ever tried to pick up one of these panels, they weigh a lot. And then they spray foam insulation inside. Mm -hmm. 
So you don't have just a piece of uh, fiberglass insulation there. You've got two inches of foam and the, the houses are dead quiet. They're, they feel so sturdy. They feel, uh, why do I drive a Mercedes versus a Toyota? It's just the sound of that door closing, you know, that thunk and that quiet ride, you know? So my, my, my Lexus makes no noise at all, right? Um, and so, oh, and I've corrected. It's not two inches of foam. It's five and a half inches of foam. Um, and the other, because it's got five and a half inches of foam, these are much better in, uh, in a fire than, uh, than a normal stick built house. Mm -hmm. You know, if you take a, you know, a 30 year old house, that's, that wood's all dried out, right? You know, so these are, you know, these are, uh, like I said, I'm just, I'm just a fan and Sunrise is built is on this project. Sunrise is, Sunrise is built one, uh, stick built standard and this one is going up, uh, uh, through SIPS panels, and that's the the learning. So, so why did I why did I want to go buy five acres to maybe do this again? Because the education will already be, have been done, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, so it'd be it'd be easy to bump this out another four feet, put a double door in it, put a wrap around porch, et cetera, et cetera, and next thing you know, you've got a you turn this hundred and eighty thousand dollar house into two hundred and forty. And I also see it's up on red dirt. You see red dirt everywhere there to uh, get houses elevated enough in case of uh, in case of water. And uh, that's and again the new the new construction. This 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 a hurricane blew through here, right? And these are fine. You know, they're, they, they lost a couple of days of work and then they were back on the job. Yeah. And Where this kind of material really is strong enough to withstand um, the hurricane. Um, yes, um, the, the, if you go back to the, go back and look at the sawgrass video, that was the one we built on the water. Mm -hmm. That was a hurricane lot. Um, and uh, so the question just came in is, do you need a special builder? No, what happens with a with these panels is you don't need as much um, uh, you don't you don't need carpenters as much as you need laborers. You're you're putting you're putting something together that's already had the um, had the specialty work done, that the exacting work is done. So so you so a you have no waste on job site. There's no waste, right? And I mean literally none. Um, and then you have, you just, you just need folks that can follow instructions, not folks that are, that are experienced Finnish carpenters. Right. right? So, you know, so you can have a carpenter and five workers as opposed to an equal number, because usually every skilled trade has a runner that goes with them. Right? Yes. Um, you know, and, and it's, this is stuff that's been around a long time. This is how houses are constructed in other countries. Um, they're done in, this is how houses used to be done in the uh, turn, of the, turn of the 1900s, 1910, 20. You would order a house from, C, from the series catalog and it would come all ready to assemble. You'd get your contractor on site and you'd put the house up and those houses are still standing. Um, the, the, mid, the Midwest, the Rust Belt cities are full of Sears houses. Um, Interesting. That are, you know, they're still, they're, they're, they're better than what was built on site. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, everything that's, everything that's old becomes new again, right? Is that how you you're say not that? Allowing, you're not allowing for any customization, right? You're just sort of building um, one, one model and like oh, you said, flip oh, it. Oh gosh, I hope so. But um, so what, what happens and what will happen with one of these, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen with one of these because, because the Sunrise folks are just too nice. They're going to get somebody that comes up and they're going to say, can you do a little this? Can you do a little that? Can you do this, that? And, that? and next thing you know, you've got three weeks added to the project while they're, you know, while they're painting trim blue in one room and green in another. And um, so I like cookie cutter. <laughs> and my guy's writing back, no, no, no. Um, so, so no, what you see is what you get. 
Um, this is what we're building. We're building a standardized project product. It'll have a quartz countertop, silver appliances, um, a uh, laminate uh, uh, la laminate plank flooring, uh, luxury vinyl pla plank flooring. Um, it'll be painted uh, Navajo white. If you're going to if you're if you're going to Pratt, I think it's Pratt and Lambert is Navajo white. Um, it'll be painted. It'll be painted 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 renter beige. Um, but the things you touch aren't going to be entry level Home Depot stuff. It's going to be done fitting what your, your who your market is. So it'll be it'll be a you know a you know a, it won't be an entry level uh, toilet. The cabinets will have um, the glide the glide pull closures. Um, it'll you know it'll be it'll be nice enough. Nice particularly job. in a rental because I want I want the tenant to come in and know that it's so much better than where they were and that they're getting a deal mm -hmm. and you know another five thousand dollars in fit and finishes to keep a tenant long term is you know that's that's the goal that that's yes. that's where you make a little money mm -hmm. <laughs> but oh gosh yeah the uh what was it was the, one of the ones in inner rarity where they let the lawyer come in and start playing interior designer um that that one took a while uh, so um so you know you've got to match you got to match to who your market is and for me if the average price if the median price in a marketplace is two hundred and eighty thousand dollars then i want to be at the two hundred and forty nine thousand dollar price point I want to be, I want to be almost as nice, but plenty nice enough. You know, if I'm in a neighborhood of, if I'm in a neighborhood of $1,500 rentals, then I want to be a $1,500 brand new rental. With these prefabs, is there much of a risk of cost overrun on them or, or not? Really? And that's, a, that's another piece is no, <laughs> no, because it's, it's done. You bid, you bid it and you say, for ninety thousand dollars, deliver to me a twelve hundred square foot house that meets all these requirements. Yeah, that seems like a no-brainer. Right. Yeah. And but there are building departments that frown on it. That oh no no. Well, and it's part of it is protecting the local the, the local builders and contractors and tradespeople um, because this is this is mechanization. This is. This is industrial in, industrialization of what's been a cottage industry for you know a hundred years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I I you know I was uh, you know I'm I think I said before I'm 64, and so I came I I made my money with the advent of the personal computer, um, but I was a credit man, so that's where my career career started. Is I was what was known as a credit man, and that was a real skill. That was a real skill, granting credit. And then comes along FICO and everybody gets a number and you don't need credit people anymore. The computer says what things are. Well, here we are. Here we are. You know, do I need, do I need three carpenters on this job site? No, I don't. I need one supervising carpenter. You know, I couldn't, I, you know, I couldn't get a job in my business in my, in my trade basically. Um, in the San Francisco area, it all it all left in the it all left in the eighties. Yeah. So, but we we adapt, right? Mm -hmm. so. You, I'm wondering. Um, so, if this was a traditional construction, do you have a number on like how much you saved through the SIP panel? The SIP panel materials cost mm -hmm. more. <laughs> what you save is two months on building time. Mm. So it's all that on site. So even if I deliver at the same exact cost, my mm. time, if it costs me the same, the same amount, saving two months takes a big chunk of risk out of it. Mm. Instead of, instead of five months, I'm done in two, then, you know, then, then I can go, I can go do it again. If I'm making, if, if we're making twenty thousand, call it twenty thousand dollars a door, ten thousand to the developer, ten thousand to the to the equity partner, um, I want to turn that over as fast as I can. 
And so I can do three turns with a SIPS house instead of two turns with a stick built. Hmm. So, so velocity, velocity of money and, and the assurance that the product is, the product is uniform and consistent. So as long as you, long as you know how to pour, as long as you know how to pour a slab, and uh, and you set your and you set the the lot up properly, and sunrise acquisition is done. I don't know how many. Like I said I've been part. I've been party to eight. I don't know how many others. How many others they've done in the last several years, but uh, they they know how to do this. What else we got before we wrap up? Any questions on this or anything else? Uh, I mean, this is my first time uh, coming on one of these. Uh, is this kind of you mentor in development or how does it work? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't coach. I don't teach. I just... What I do is once a month I come out and talk about what I'm doing, um, mm -hmm. uh, about you know, but, but if you go back through the library of things on YouTube, um, under my name Steve Hodgdon, H-O-D-G-D-O-N, um, you'll see me talking about mistakes. Um, and Matt wants to know if um, I still want to be using Sips and Gary. Uh, south of Gary, looking in Cedar Lakes, we're trying to we're trying to find a parcel like this right now. Um, Dion brought me some that were bigger than my ability, and I wasn't ready to go out and start looking for partners yet. Mm -hmm. I like to uh, I like to be sure before before we start looking for doing things together because it's you know like you know if it, if I want to do something wrong, I want to do it. I don't want to you know I don't. <laughs> I don't want to hurt anybody, um, but yeah, we're going to do the same thing. Gary, Gary's going to be um, Indiana. It's going to be um, all metal uh, sips, so it'll be a steel frame. Steel frame instead of two by fours, it'll be steel frame. Same, same insulation, the same raceway channels, all that stuff. Um, they're going to build more in the 22, 2300 square foot range, so uh, four bed, two bath, two and a half bath kinds of properties. Um, still selling for sub three hundred thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars there's a lot of migration um yeah same time frames to install Matt. yeah um there's a lot of uh, migration continuing from chicago um and particularly now with all this uh other craziness going on uh people you know there's people like i think we have this little wave of people wanting to uh, not be one on not be in apartments anymore um but i think is i think that's a I feel it's a knee-jerk reaction um, that we're going to be okay with density again once uh, once there's a vaccine. Um, uh, another thing I was reading is that the the appeal of working from home is fading for some companies <laughs> because um, productivity has dropped off. They're noticing that you know Mondays and Fridays people are kind of taken off, and and I think. <laughs> I mean, and this is just, I can send you an article on it. It's, I don't think this work from home is, I, per, this is me personally. I, I don't think it's a long-term. No, I've, I've, I mean, I've been doing it off and on for 14 years. Um, this of late has been just too much. I need more time and more human contact. Um, Google um, has encouraged people to work from home. But if you, if you move from the Bay, if you move from Silicon Valley to Denver to work for Google, uh, you're going to take an 18% cut in pay. Yeah. So, right? and, and that's, and that's cool. I mean, that's, that's again, rebalancing. Um, I, we're, we've maintained a little office in Laguna Hills down in Orange County for several years. Um, we're going to relocate the company to Las Vegas and my admin down there will go work from home or I'll go, you know, go rent her, you know, rent her a small suite somewhere. Um, cool. It's going to be interesting what how productivity is going to be measured yeah. moving forward, and you know there's just no substitute I think with for the camaraderie of office mates. I mean that you can't. I mean that just meeting somebody in the hallway of your office and say, hey, you know what? I got an idea. I'd like to run by you, and you know it's just 
that all goes away. And um, anyway, it's it's going to be interesting to see how it all evolves and how long it'll take before people will be wanting to go back into an office again. I, I don't know. But, uh, but I think, you know, there's a whole bunch of that space that just is never going to get refilled again. Um, and and it's okay. You know, I, I, I talked to my, I talked to my, I talked to my lawyer uh, just, just the other day. I'm sitting here in a t-shirt. He's sitting there in a t-shirt and he's like, yeah, I let the office go. You know, I've been in the, been in the same room 25 years. So I let it go. You know? yeah. I don't know how parents can um, be productive and have the kids That's right. interfere. And yeah. Yeah. so I, I think it remains to be seen in terms of how that all shakes out. But um, would we, you know, if we were to develop a project like the cantonment thing, would we do a handful of models that had a had a fourth bedroom? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So there'll always be, you know, there probably probably always be some of that. Well, aren't homes now um, being automatically built with a, a, a one of the rooms as an office? Mm -hmm. So not a, not at well. That's that's in the that's in the nicer stuff, you know. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, entry level. You know, I'm my. My target, my target buyer is you know either a retired couple or a tradesman or you know somebody somebody who's you know got got some internet proof job, um, you know some government you know government folks. Um, one of the things that made the makes the cantonment uh, uh, happy in the path of progress is uh, Navy Federal Credit Union is uh, a close oh. commute to there, and there's some crazy thousands of people that work there. I see. Yeah. So, so there's, there's lots, there's, there's lots of, lots of, you know, I think we're, I don't think we're early in that neighborhood because uh, D.R. Horton's already there. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's, that follows, that follows in the uh, Who Moved My Cheese uh, book. If you haven't read Who Moved My Cheese, read Who Moved My Cheese. Um, you never want to be first. Being second is really good though. Mm -hmm. so. It sounds like with this, Florida acreage, you have plenty of nice exit strategies to choose mm -hmm. from. Right. Yeah, and we'll and we'll and I brought it out to you know brought it out to air it out so that we'd have something to talk about in coming months as it goes. You know, I'd be really happy to report next month that somebody gave me ninety thousand dollars for it. That'd be fantastic. You know, that might take a couple months. Okay. Yeah, but uh, but I want to go through I want to go through the process with the Scambia County of getting a plat map approved because I'm going to want to do it again. Mm -hmm. so. All right, all right, coming up on an hour and a half. I'm out of gas. I got to go have dinner. <laughs> all right. Very good. Um, Thank you so much. It's very thanks. interesting. Thanks, Steve. Oh sure. Yeah, it's good. Good. Everybody's there. Um, I really appreciate you giving me a chance to uh, air out uh, air out what I'm what I'm what I'm up to, um, and uh, again um, I'm around. You got questions? I'm around. You got uh, deals? Um, I'm you know I'm doing my best to stay uh, stay keep my fingers in a lot of stuff. Um, so, but uh, anyway, I want to thank again. I want to thank you all for being here, and. Um, First, uh, was it uh, third third uh, Wednesdays of every month? All right, we'll do this again next month. Sounds good. Um, oh, somebody wanted. When am I going to be in OC? I'm going to be OC uh, October fifth to sixteenth this month, uh, Monday to Friday. So I'm available for a cup of coffee the sixth through uh, uh, sixth through the fifteenth. Um, so. Um, so what else do I need to do? Uh, 415, 596, 2415. Um, let, uh, let me put my phone number here in case somebody wants it. Uh, 415, 596, 2415. All right. Yeah. And everybody, uh, all right, so. There we are. Like I said, uh, I really appreciate the feedback and the questions. And um, good to see Bettina again, and John, and other folks, Matt.
key and we'll uh, we'll see you next month. All right. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.